Hi, my name is Charles, and I serve here at Transformation Church as one of the executive pastors. And I want to take a moment before we jump into the message just to say thank you, first of all, for watching. It means the world to us that you would be a part, no matter where you're watching from, no matter who you are. I'm believing that this message is going to encourage your faith and hopefully transform your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you take a moment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, not for us, but really for you. We wanna be a resource to encourage your faith and be with you on this journey of following Jesus. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the message today. I hope it blesses you. At every campus, I dare you to take five steps and give God the greatest shot of praise. Oh, is that the best you've got? Elevation, God has been too good. And another one. see who's here right now because when the music was hype everybody was praising but at every campus right now I want you to praise God no matter what the atmosphere around you is doing where are the real praisers at are they in Toronto are they in Orlando are they at Uh-oh. I think somebody came with their own praise this morning. Yeah. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. If God has been good to you this week, if God has been good to you throughout your life, <laughs> Just one more time at every campus. Let's make this about him right now. Uh-oh. You got it. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Get out of here. Get out of here. High five your neighbor and say, today's going to be a good Sunday. Oh, come on at every campus. Today is going to be a good Sunday. You may be seated. Oh, my goodness. It feels like I'm home today. Um, I bring you greetings from Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, where, where I get the privilege and the honor to be the lead servant at a church called Transformation Church. Shout out to Transformation Church right now. Transformation Nation, they're joining us. It's elevation and transformation right now together. It's what we call kingdom. At the end of the day, it's not about a church or logo or anybody particular. It's about Jesus and the kingdom of God being advanced in this earth. And so today, as this is Pastor's Appreciation Month, I have to stop and thank God for two of the greatest pastors in the world, Pastor Stephen and Holly Furtick at every campus. Y'all don't know what y'all have here. Can we thank God for the man and woman of God? Thank you, somebody got some sense. Y'all, y'all spoiled, y'all. Don't let them come to Tulsa. We'll treat them right. And for every campus pastor, every children's pastor, every parent who's a pastor, because you're parenting your home, we appreciate you. Um, today I've been sent on assignment and they only gave me 22 minutes to preach. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, but this week, I, I feel like I have a prophetic burden. This is not a message that's warmed up and like, I'm going to Elevation Church, let's preach this. No, 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 no. I've been praying about the people who would be in this room and be watching this on rebroadcast and that would be in Tulsa, and God gave me a burden. I've been carrying y'all all week. Because there's many people in this room who have been hurting, distracted, and devastated by damage that happened to you in another season. Now, this message is not for everybody. It's only for people who've experienced damage. <laughs> Somebody's like, not me. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Let, let's be hot, humble, open, and transparent. If you have experienced damage in any area of your life, relationally, financially, physically, emotionally, would you please just let everybody feel comfortable and raise your hand right now? Come on. If your hand is not up, Lord... 
And this week, I released a brand new book called Damage But Not Destroy. And um, the reason I tell you this is because I, I wanted people to understand the journey of going from trauma to triumph. And right now in this day and age, a lot of people are staying in the trauma. They're glorifying the trauma. Ugh. They're making the trauma the excuse. But my Bible says when God gets in the mix of something, it cannot stay the same. And many of us have been working to keep our excuses the same. And today I came to help you be delivered. <sighs> Today, I need your faith and expectation to go to another level. At every place that you are listening to this on the treadmill in Tulsa, right here in this room, God is coming to move you out of the paralytic place you've been. And by faith, your damage will no longer define you. Okay, let me get into this. My burden is to tell you, write this down, the value is still in you. I know that people tried to tell you what you would never be. I know that you getting denied from that school made you feel something insignificant. I know when they didn't hire you at Elevation Church. <laughs> I felt that thing in here. That was... You thought that their elevation was God's elevation for you. And today I came to tell you no matter what you've lost, the value is still in you. Somebody say, the value is still in me. You didn't say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. The value is still in me. I need you to every campus with faith say, the value is still in me. So act like it. Stop coming into the presence of God acting like he didn't put his self. He put himself on the inside of you. He said, Holy Spirit, Jesus, let's make man in our image. That wasn't your body first because it was three spirits talking. So what did he make first? He made your spirit. He made the thing that will never change. He said, I'm in you. And if I'm in you, there is nothing, anything, and nobody can do to you in this world that takes away your value. Oh, okay. And the lie of the enemy, listen to me, is that the more life you live, the more value you lose. We act like our lives is like a car going off the car lot. That as soon as we drive it off, it depreciates. But I came to tell somebody right now who has been in a place of wondering if God still wanted to use you. The person with the two divorces, the value is still in you. You lost your second business, the value is still in you. Y'all better help me. You've been in the same cycle for 50 years, the value is still in you. The woman who's been promiscuous and the young man that has a body count more than we can count, the value is still in Now I know there's a brick wall that I'm talking to right now because some of you have believed the lie so long you don't see yourself how God sees you. And today I'm about to shake you up. I'm ready to fight the devil. Oh, y'all. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing God's people. The same ones that come in here and sing these beautiful songs. Walk out and feel that God has no purpose for them. And that they can't move forward. Somebody say, the value is still in me. Ugh. Okay, so Ephesians 2.10. Don't just put this on an Instagram post. Believe it for your life. For we are God's masterpiece. That's nasty Bible right there. I, I want you to think about something that you think is beautiful. And the creator of the universe says, out of everything I made, I'm going to call you my masterpiece. If we got paintings in Paris and in and in museums that I don't even know how to say the words of where they're from, and they, they call them priceless. How much more? If something a creation made is priceless, how much 
more are you worth to God? Okay? Okay. This is the tension I need us to be able to wrestle with this morning. I am valuable, but I am damaged. This is the tension. Because I know God thinks I'm his masterpiece. Created a brand new in Christ Jesus. Ah, glory to God. <laughs> but every time I get mad, I still want to cuss. Are y'all going to be fake? <laughs> you, you was in traffic this morning saying some stuff. You better quit it. I am the righteousness of Jesus Christ, but I still get mad at my kids. Okay. Oh, God. I got to go back home because this section is acting bougie. I, I'll do anything for you, Lord, except give up the cake. Your sin is not lust, it's gluttony. Okay, can we be real? Does, does anybody that loves Jesus still have some, I steal? I, I still deal with comparison. I, 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 I still look at what I've done and disqualify myself from what God wants to do. Somebody say, I steal. This is the tension of being called by God. Is that I know I'm valuable, but I still have some things that God's healing on the inside of me. And what the enemy would try to convince you is that you are too damaged to be able to do what God said because you still have some areas that God is working on you. For all the perfect people, raise your hand. Because the only person that would be perfect on this earth is Jesus. <laughs> And if you're waiting for everything to be perfect before you start doing what God's called you to do, you're going to be waiting forever. God is saying to us right now, would you bring me your damage? This is the journey I've been on for the past four years. I was here five years ago. Since then, I've learned I'm damaged. And if I just sit in that, I get defeated. But if I bring my damage to the only one who can handle it, he will turn my damage into something that pushes me to, everybody say destiny. destiny. Okay. So today I'm going to title this message. Ooh, I'm about to preach to you in the next 15 minutes. I don't know why I started jumping like Tigger, but I'm telling you, I'm going to preach a message and this is what we're going to title it. What does God do with damage? What does God do with damage? The first thing I want to tell you that God does with damage, I'm going to use this um, Old Testament um, character that a lot of people don't talk about because simply they can't say his name. His name is Mephibosheth. I know. <laughs> I don't know what his parents were thinking. But there are, there are a lot of Davids around here and a lot of Phillips. Ain't a lot of Mephibosheths in 2000. And 23. This young man named Mephibosheth was in line to be the king of the entire country. But I need to set a little backstory so you understand where Mephibosheth's damage came from, okay? So, so, so I'm about to show you some pictures because I like to, to make stories come alive in the Bible. This is by no means biblically accurate because <laughs> the church folks. But I'm going to just try to make it come alive. I'm, there, was a, there was a king named Saul. Could you put him on the screen? In my mind, in the movie of my mind, this is what <laughs> Saul looks like. And he once was anointed by God. But he stopped obeying the commands of God. He wanted the position, but he did not want to follow in obedience. Be careful when you're walking in a position and you stop obeying. God took his hand off of his life, and, and he had to raise up another king, okay? We're just going to walk through this. But then Saul had a son named Jonathan. This, in my mind, is what Jonathan looked like. This was Jonathan, okay? 
ladies, calm down. That's just, she, oh, you laughing too hard over there. That's just Idris. But in my mind, this is what Jonathan looked like. And Jonathan was, was Saul's son. He was in line to be the heir of the throne. But when daddy disobeyed, it took away the son's inheritance. The reason we got to deal with our damage is because what's not transformed is transferred. The, the reason we got to go to counseling and we believe in theology and therapy. Uh-oh. I'm going to just pray about it. You need to pray about it and go to a practice. You need to get in an e-group and community and you need to go to counseling. You need to worship and do the hard work. That's what some of y'all came for right there. But Jonathan now has a son, and his son's name is Mephibosheth, okay? So Mephibosheth is crippled, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a picture of what Mephibosheth looks like in my mind, okay? So it's Saul, it's Jonathan, and it's Mephibosheth, okay? Now watch, somebody's like, is that my brother? <laughs> I saw you. I know him. <laughs> There was one more character in this story. His name was King David. And this is what King David looked like in, in, in the movie of my mind right now, okay? King David, put him on the screen for me real quick. I don't know, it's just strong, like, okay. Now that everybody has this movie in their head, this sets the story for where we find King David after Mephibosheth is now in a place where he's been damaged. Watch this, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3. One day David asked, he's king now, is there anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Because Jonathan and David were boys. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet though. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Maker, son of Emil. So David, watch this, sent for him and brought him from Maker's home. Now, I want to point out the hater in this story. His name is Ziba. And Ziba has the ear of the king. The king asks, is there anybody left that I can show kindness to? And he says, yeah. And does not say his name. He says his condition. Be careful when people describe you by your condition and not your name. He said, there's, yeah, there's somebody left, but he's crippled. There's somebody left, but they're a liar. There's somebody left, but they, they're not faithful. And the reason that this young man was crippled, Mephibosheth, was not his own fault. And that's why I want to let you know, you have to to make sure you don't allow people to make your issue your identity. No, hear me. You did it. You are not it. Can we be honest? Some of us have done some dumb things. But do not let your issue or anybody else make your issue your identity. And he tries to describe him. And the truth of the matter is, like most of us, Mephibosheth was damaged not because of his own fault. When I, when I think about most of the places in my life, I'm going to just be real about me, that I got damaged, most of it happened before I was a teenager. The insecurity did not, did not start when I was 28. It started at 12. See how quiet it is? That drive to go and go and perform and excel, that's because they didn't see you unless you got a trophy. So at six years old, you knew you couldn't just say what you need. You needed to prove you were worth them looking at you. It's stuck. The greatest time to kill a king is when it's a kid. The reason the enemy's been after you since you were a young child. It's because there is a king in you. Woo. And the greatest time to kill a king is when it's a kid. It's what they tried to do to Moses. Kill every child under the age of two. That's what they tried to do to Jesus. And some of us have been de dealing with our damage since we were young. <laughs> 
And, and this is what I need you to know. You are so special. You've always been a threat to the devil. No, hear what I'm just saying. The attack on your life from a young age has been because if you ever walk fully in the dominion that God has given you, if you ever were fully free from the insecurity, well, I can't do that, and I'm not like them. And if you ever just said, but he is with me, and if he is with me, who? Everybody say, who? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> who can be against me? Second Samuel chapter 4, I got to move. Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son named Mephibosheth who was crippled. I'm going to show you where his damage happened. He was five years old when he got damaged. And the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled. But as she hurried away, she dropped him and he became crippled. What happens when the person who was supposed to care for you damages you? I'm not going to get too much in your business, but some of your issues is your mama. <laughs> and some of your issues is your daddy. And some of your issues, it's the people who are supposed to care for you. They drop you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm about to deal with it. Because the damage is no longer going to define us. I feel the presence of God already. If there's anybody that feels like your damage is too big for God, let me just run a list down for you of people that God used who were damaged. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer and a wanderer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Moses was a murderer with a stutter. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a, a flirt. Let's be real politically correct. Rahab was a prostitute. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Uh, uh, Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran away from God. Job went bankrupt and lost everything. John the Baptist ate bugs. That's just weird. Peter denied Jesus. The disciples fell asleep while Jesus was praying. The Samaritan woman was divorced five times and had a sex addiction. Zacchaeus was too small and stole money. Paul was too righteous. Timothy had an old so Lazarus was dead and Michael was addicted to pornography. And my God still used all of us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You about to make me run. Because there's some people that know that God can do his best work with damaged people. If you believe it, give God a shout of praise. I feel my help coming on. Write it down in a point. God does his best work with damaged people. Because his strength is made perfect in our... So why won't you show him your weakness? I've been trying to keep it together for everybody. And God says, if you want to hold it up, do it. I'll be here when you want to actually come clean. So what can God do with your damage? First point. He calls for it. Everybody that's trying to hide your damage, good luck. When Mephibosheth is in a place called Lodabar, a place of nothing, no pasture, no fruit growing, the king says, is there anybody I can say, yeah, this one dude. He said, go get him. I'm calling for the damaged. You're broken? I like that. You're fractured? Come on. He calls. What can God do with damage? He calls for it. And some of y'all have not been answering the call. No, I'm just going to be a businessman. He said, I want you to be in that field, but I want you to bring all your damaged areas to me so I can raise you up as a testimony in that area. And some of you today, all God's saying is, I want your damage. Stop hiding it. Stop acting like it didn't happen. You were abused when you were young and your family doesn't even know it. You've blocked it out. You've suppressed it. And you're wondering why you're dealing with anxiety so much. Because it was never meant to stay on the inside of you. I want your damage. Tonight, when you're in your bed and the Holy Spirit begins to start whispering to you. And he reminds you of things that happened. He, what he's doing is he's calling for the damage. 
I want it. I'm the only one that can do something with it. <laughs> what does God do with, you, with your damage? He calls for it. The second thing that God does with your damage, watch this. He carries it. Oh, this makes me happy because Mephibosheth was crippled. I need you to understand. Just imagine with me. They come to his door. Knock, 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 knock. Hello? Is Mephibosheth there? <laughs> yes. What a horrible name. Come with me. <laughs> now watch. When they say, come with me, he does not have the power on his own to get to where he has been commissioned or destined to go. He's in a place of nothing and they want him in the palace. So the king, oh, I feel the presence of God, will never ask you to come to a place that he won't carry you to. Scott, come help me real quick. Scott, I need a couple strong guys. Come on, help me. He's sitting down and he's like, hey, you're not going to kill me because it was custom back then to anybody that was in line before you killed their whole family. So when the king's guard came to him, he was like, um, I'm about to die. That's what Christianity sometimes makes people think. That when God comes to them, he's ready to smite them and punish them. The king was wanting to show favor. But he says, come with me to the palace. But he still does not have the ability to get there on his own. So the king sends power that is not his own. You want me to come? Oh, God. These brothers are strong. Take me over to the king's palace. Take me over there. All Mephibosheth had to do is surrender. Ah. So he could be taken. Now, don't drop me. Just let, let me down. Let me down. What are you saying to me, Pastor Mike? God will never call you to a place that he won't carry you to. The problem is most of us have not surrendered. Let me show you. Zechariah 4, 6, it says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but it's going to be by the spirit of God. Where you're at right now, God's saying, I'm calling for your damage. But if you would surrender, I'll carry you. I will carry you to the place I want you to be. Philippians 1, 6. And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day of Jesus Christ. What will God do with your damage? He calls for it. He carries it. And then watch this. Uh, he covers it. When Mephibosheth gets to the palace, he comes in and he thinks he's dead. I mean, look at it in the scripture. Literally, King David has to say, don't be afraid. I intend to show you kindness. This is verse 7. Because of the promise I made to your father, Jonathan, I will give you woo, all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. But watch this. This is our response usually because of our damage. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Be careful when shame starts talking. He's in the presence of the king and many times God is wanting to use us at a higher level and our shame starts talking. Why would you even consider a dead dog like me? But the king ignores his ignorance because the king knows the value that's on the inside of him. Just like the king knows the value that's on the inside of you and he invites him to eat at his table. Now, the reason why this blows my mind is because when you think about where Mephibosheth was damaged, where was his damage at? His legs. When you pull up a seat to the king's table, when he sits and he looks over the landscape of everybody else, the thing that damaged him is now covered. Let me introduce you to the grace of God. <laughs> When you come into a loving relationship by faith with God, the grace of God covers your damaged area. Somebody should get excited about that. 
Because what the enemy was trying to use to disqualify you is the very thing that God says, I know it, but I'll cover it. And we have to begin to rely on the grace. Somebody shout at me, grace. grace. The unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor and kindness of God. And some of y'all think y'all built y'all own table. <laughs> and you covering yourself. You trying to have money cover it. We still see you. You getting flown out. We still see you. Mac makeup, Louis Gucci, Fendi down. We still see you. It's not until you get covered with the grace of God. I got to move. Ugh. I came to tell somebody, pull up a chair to the table of God. Pull up a chair to where God has for you. Listen to me. What does God do with, it, with your damage? Say it with me. Say he calls for it. He, calls for it. he carries it. He covers it. it. Number four, he converts it. He flipped that thing. God says, if you give me your damage, I'll flip it. If you give me everything that you've been ashamed of and you let me cleanse you and purify you and wash you and change you and transform you, I'll flip this thing so cold. Mephibosheth in one day goes from crippled to covered. Everybody say one day. I don't know if today is your one day, but by faith, I'm prophesying that God is about to turn your season around very quickly. This thing, what it looked like last year, it's going to look like something else this year. Some of y'all don't have faith to believe it, but I need a few people with crazy faith that my situation can flip when God gets in the midst of it. If you believe it at every campus, give God a shout of praise. Oh, I feel this thing. He can convert this, JJ. Crippled to covered. Shame to having a seat. No identity to a full inheritance. He went from pain to a platform. His damage was turned into destiny. His trauma became triumph. He went from separated to being a son. This is the gospel. This is the good news. Tell everybody, y'all know a song, huh? That's what Jesus did for me. The only reason I'm standing on this stage is not because I did everything perfect. It's when I messed up, when I did the wrong thing, when I was damaged. I did not run from my father. I ran to him. I have four children and all of them break stuff. They don't know how much stuff costs. They have no clue. But, but my children have all broken expensive things. But the one thing I love about all my kids is when they break something that they know they cannot pay for and they do not have the intelligence to fix, they bring it to their father. Now, if a four-year-old and a five-year-old and a seven-year-old has the sense to bring their damaged things to their father... What's our excuse? Church, what I'm asking you today is to bring your damage to God because he's big enough to handle it. What does God do with damage? He calls for it. He carries it. He covers it. This is good news. He converts it. Last one. He commissions it. God doesn't want you to hide your damage. He wants to heal your damage. And then he wants you to take it and use it to share with everybody else how good God has been. I, I recall a story in John chapter five, verse eight, there was a man that was a paralytic sitting by the pool for 38 years. And Jesus asked him a question, the same question I'm gonna ask you today. Do you want to be made whole? See, this is the thing that everybody has to realize. Getting healed from your damage is a decision. Some of y'all been holding on to the thing that God said, give me that, and you playing tug of war with God. He said, keep it if you want it. You want to have low self-esteem for the rest of your life? Keep that. That's less than what I've called you to in the kingdom. You want to keep having it. I put the whole team on my back. He said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. If you want to put the whole thing on your back, go ahead. But when you get sick of carrying it, I'll be here. This man, he answers, I want to be made whole. Jesus heals him. Man pops up. And he about to run off and Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on, come here, come here. 
take this mat. And I bet the man was like, I don't want that. I don't want to remember anything from back there. <laughs> and Jesus tells him, no, no, no. You need this. This is, I'm commissioning you to go everywhere. I want you to see walk. Hey, hey, I want you to see walk, but make sure you holding that mat. Because I want all the people who passed you to remember that it was not their effort or their energy. It was nothing but the power of God. Somebody, I don't know who I'm talking about, but the fact that you're still here, it is nothing but the power of the fact that you still got your right mind. It was nothing but the power of God. Now God is commissioning our damage. That's why every time I stand up, I tell people I was addicted to pornography. The pastor? Yes, I was a person before I was a pastor. Y'all so funny. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. Not the man of God. Yes. And what did I do? I brought my damage to him. Because in the beginning, God said, I'm going to use this broken vessel and I'm going to change people's life. I'm going to trans people, transform people's lives. But... I need him to not be scared to take his damage when it's healed and share it with people. That's why the word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb. That's what Jesus did. But the words of our testimony, that's why many people aren't overcoming because you are too quiet. The reason why that stuff can't come back in my life, because I say it all the time. This is what God did for me. And today I just came with a burden to let somebody know who's had many abortions. To let somebody know that has continued to have miscarriages. To let somebody know whose career has not gotten off the ground. To let somebody know who doesn't know who their real family is. To let somebody know who's made mistakes over and over. God can do something miraculous with your damage. Okay, let me explain it. Will you bring out my example and then we're going to go home. I I want this picture to last in your mind. Um, We are three parts, okay? We are a spirit, okay? And then we are a soul, mind, will, and emotions. And then we have a body, okay? And the Holy Spirit showed me this. He 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 told me, he said, Michael, people don't understand this. Write these three things down. You have a covering. You have a container. And you have contents. So, so the spirit part of you is the realest part of you. It's what God said, let us make man in our image. It was the spirit part of you. He breathed into us. <sighs> into dust. And then we came in. With your lips and your hips and your eyes and your thighs. It was a creative miracle. Some of y'all are like, could I have less of a miracle? Could I... <laughs> Cause you take off a little bit of this miracle. But what ends up happening is the covering is our soul, mind, will, and emotions. And in this life, a lot of times through situations we can't control, our covering gets ripped. And somebody says something to us that makes us feel not worthy. And then we come into contact with some other people and And they start saying things about us. And we get marked up in our lives. And our mind, will, and emotions get marked up. And then we get into that relationship that they find, but we know they're not no good. And they start drilling on our identity. And poking holes in our confidence. And we have soul ties with them because I need to feel something because nobody was ever there to show me nothing. And then we let success and our career come to poke holes in us. Does God want to do something with this? I don't know. There's so much damage. I did it. 
now, you want me to think that God wants to use me? And every time I come around people, I'm getting stabbed in the back. That's why I'm not joining no small group. There's people there. Come on, y'all. I'll come to worship. I'll sing, this is the gospel. Pray. But people, I'm getting cut on. And then stuff happens to me that stains me forever. God can't want to use something like this. And then life hits you. Isn't he the example God? Oh, God. (laughs) I know. But then God brings fire into your life. And it starts burning places in you. And stuff starts catching on fire. And the truth of the matter is, I don't know if God can use me because I'm too damaged. Uh Uh-uh. This is like when me and my wife found out our son had autism. He started burning us and allowing the fear of the future to take us out. But then the Holy Spirit came and blew on us. But this still don't look good. Does anybody want this? But God said, what you don't realize is this was just your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. The truth of the matter is I'll take that and I'll heal it. I'll do something that nobody could do with it. Yeah, it's messy. Yes. But the truth of the matter is when you get down to the container, our body, it's been jacked up too. Even to the point where it starts leaking through and we say stuff like the value is still in you. But I'm still missing something. But the truth of the matter is, the most valuable part of this whole thing was not in the covering. And it was not in this container, even though it's hard to get this out. It was in the thing that was covering it. The value of this, these are some really expensive shoes. But the, oh, even the stain that was on the outside did not get on the inside because the value, I need somebody to hear, the value was in the contents that was put on the inside of you. If you're in this room right now and your covering has been damaged and your container has been damaged standing at every campus right now, I don't want you to just shout at the end of this message. I want the Spirit to speak to you. I want to let you know that the contents are still good. The value is still in you. If you've been damaged in any area of your life and the enemy's been trying to convince you that you, because you look like this, cannot be used by God. Today I came to speak to that lie. And I'm here to tell you that I'm a living witness that God can take damaged people who've messed up over and over again, who bring their damage back to him, and he can do a miracle that no man can stop, no scandal can stop, no spit can stop. (laughs) Y'all don't want to be fake. You can't cancel me because you didn't call me. Some of y'all ain't never walked through nothing. But God is doing something on the inside of my life. Do I do everything perfect? No, but I am committed to bring my damage to the foot of the cross. What does God do with damage? What can God do with my damage? I'm here as a living witness to tell you he calls for it. He carries it. He covers it. He converts it. And then he commissions it. 
If you're ready for your damage not to be your de definition anymore, but you want your damage to take you to your destiny, would you lift your hands all over this room? I'm about to pray for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel the presence of God. Somebody's realizing the value is still in them, that nothing the enemy has said or nothing you've done to yourself is going to disqualify you. Because today, here we are, God. Come on. We are your children crying out to you, asking us to take everything that is not like you. And God, would you take it? Take our pieces and turn it into a masterpiece. Take our bad decisions, Father God, and flip that thing. Convert it, Father, into something that brings you glory and takes us to destiny. Today, Father God, we will no longer deny that we've been hurt. Because you cannot heal what we do not reveal. So today, God, here we are as a church. Elevation Church, Transformation Church, your sons and daughters all over the world. And we're asking you, God, do something with this damage. Use it for your glory. We will no longer be defined by it. We will only be defined by what you've done through your precious son, Jesus. The Spirit is speaking right now. At every campus, you just need to ask the Holy Spirit. I see tears flowing right now. People are getting their faith back right now. You're going to be able to go into this week and be the mom you really want to be. You're going to be able to go into that job and actually make a difference for the kingdom of God. Somebody's confidence is coming back. If you're in this room right now and you've been carrying your damage without the one who created you, Jesus. Today, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm telling you it's the greatest decision you could ever make. It's the thing that took me from a liar, a manipulator, one who was addicted to pornography, had all kinds of bad things in my heart, got arrested for car insurance, for all kinds of stuff. And God said, give me that. Because he's the only one that if you give him your heart, he'll help you change your habits. If you're here today, you're not in a room with a bunch of perfect people. You're in a room with a bunch of damaged people that have been saved by grace. And we don't forget what God has done. We're carrying our mat today. And we're saying you can be healed. You can be freed. And you can be changed. With one decision of faith. Asking Jesus into your life. It'll change everything. If that's you on the count of three, I just want you to lift your hands. We're not going to make you tell us everything you did. This is not what we're going to do today. That's what religion would tell you. But God is saying, just give me your heart. I'll get you with the right people. We'll talk. We'll heal. Religion says, rush, hurry. And God says, come to me. And if you're tired of carrying that burden by yourself, on the count of three, I just want you to lift your hand at every campus, at Transformation Church, wherever you are around the world. I don't care if you're on the treadmill and you just walk in and then you just, mm, and everybody's like, what just happened? It's a dance move <laughs> called salvation. Okay? It doesn't matter. Forget them. Only you and God will stand in eternity and answer for what you're about to do. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm proud of you, but more than that, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever. Three, shoot your hand up all over this campus. All, I see you, my brother. There's people in every room. Oh, Elevation Church, how do we celebrate? Transformation Church, how do we thank God? Hallelujah. Listen, at Transformation and Elevation, nobody prays alone. So I want us all to pray this prayer for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. Somebody say, God. Here's my damage. You're the only one that can use it. Today, I give you my life. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power. Here I am. I'm yours. I'll serve you forever. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God praise? at every campus. Thank you, God. Hey, I want to take a moment again before we jump off and say thank you. Our church is not built on one individual, but on the sacrifice of so many. And you being a part, it means the world. So thanks for watching the message. I also want to say thank you to the thousands of people around the world who are generous. It means the world. And we are able to represent, we're able to be generous, to meet the needs of people because of your giving. 
If you haven't taken the step to give, trust me, there is no pressure at all. But if you feel led, you can text the word GIVE to 828282 or you can go online. When we partner together, God uses our generosity to make a difference. Again, if you haven't, take a moment to subscribe to the YouTube channel and more than watch it on YouTube, join us on Sundays. Every single Sunday we're here, 1045 CST AM. We would love to see you. And like we always say, go out and live a transformed life.